Enter the Dragon, it's from OCS Korea. And now the supply I brought in earlier in hex 2320, I'm going to load onto the trucks that are up there and move them into position. Now the truck, the, the 1 signifies the number of SPs or RE equivalents it can carry, and the 45 is its movement factor. In order to load a vehicle, a transport vehicle, it costs 10% of its movement factors. So I'm going to load this first truck up, which will cost it 5. Oops. Move this down to the headquarters, the army headquarters down here. So along the road, cost one half movement per X. So up to six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then to unload again, it's a tenth of the ten percent of your movement factors. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. We're gonna load the next SP onto it for twenty-five. Nine thirty, another five to unload. Thirty-five. Thirty-seven. Thirty-eight. Thirty-nine. And I'm going to try to leave my trucks parked up there most of the time because that's where the supplies coming in. And we had another two SPs that we moved over to this location, which is hex seven twelve. And in this scenario, the North or the Chinese get a rail cap of three, which means they can move three SPs over their rail network. So what I'm going to do is take these S two SPs and rail them down to here. So I used two of my three rail factors, but I'm not going to use any more. <coughs> so I'm done. <coughs> That covers the, the movement phase. I'm done moving stuff for now. So the next phase we do is supply. And this is where it gets tricky because this is the uh, trace supply stuff. And Technically, the, the next phase would be the air phase, but you don't really have any air. so. Yeah, during your movement, it builds right at the end of the movement phase is where you would conduct any uh, air barrages that you might have. And as I explained earlier, these MIGs up here, while I have them, they're restricted to doing patrol zone and interception stuff only. So basically I can't have them go on missions, so they're just going to sit up there until Bill tries to do something with his guys. So after the move, we'll go ahead and do trace supply. And the way trace supply works is if you click on the globe on the top, it'll clear out some of the, uh, well, it'll clear off all the counters. And if you look at hexes like uh, 207, and 712, you notice there's a little like dump there that signifies that's a supply source from the North Koreans and the Chinese. And what you have to be able to do is run your trace along the rail lines up to a point where your units can then trace back to that certain point and basically get their supply. The other neat thing is your headquarters can throw supply from certain points too. So if we take an example here, this 80th division here that I'm moving back and forth. His supply would come from this headquarter here who can throw supply five ahead. And he's able to get supply because he's sitting on the end of a rail line here that goes back to a supply source in China. So if we look at all the units that I have out here, I, I, it's easy for me to tell that they're all on trace supply. Does anybody have any questions about any of the units in particular or anything that I said? Because I know I'm not explaining it 100% percent Yeah, terrific, I'd like so. to hear some questions. Actually, I, I had a, the question that I had was, was dialing it back some, and that was um, the step loss that you took to break a unit down so that you could garrison a space. Um, yeah. Two things, because I don't actually have a copy of this one handy. Um, are there generic step, sort of step downs or, or, uh, uh, or reduced step units, um, or is it, you know, there is a specific second step is it just a flip or is there yet another set of counters and then the other reason the or the other question was um what was the advantage of garrisoning that supply point that early in the game when you've got a fairly well established front 
the reason to the reason to garrison is just to be safe. It you know, may have been overkill on my part, it may not have been, but generally you don't want to leave supply dumps by themselves for any length of time at all. Because no, the theory really all would have to do is... I can, I can just have up. walked this guy right up and do it. There's essentially no zones to control. Uh, okay, that's the part that I was missing. No zones of control. Yeah, so he can move directly there are, right but up there. there. The, the zones of control will cut um, your trace supply and throwing supplies. They're, they're, they're effective for supplies, but they won't stop the... Gotcha, I understand. So, thank you now for, for you. that. Yeah, now for the other part kind of, of the this is the... Kind of a key thing in OCS is to always keep headquarters, supply dumps, air bases and stuff. If they're anywhere near the front lines or really not fun when the, uh, your opponent breaks through your line and sends a exploits a bunch of yeah I gotcha you yeah, for the other part of your question these the number of steps a unit has is determined by that little yellow number on some of these divisional counters uh, so the okay. counters don't flip to reduce in strength they have this generic step loss counter here which gotcha. you can stick that underneath the unit yeah and the breakdown units are just given in the game and they're they need to match certain aspects of the counter they're breaking off from, but generally have plenty of them. Okay, I understand. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Anybody have any questions on the tr on the trace supply or the supply points or anything yet? You know, when I was first learning, it so it sounded simple, but um. <laughs> <laughs> um, it sounded simple, but in practice, it was it was it was kind of hard to figure. If we have no questions on the, that, we'll go on to the next phase. After the supply phase is the, your opponent's reaction phase. So I'll let Bill go ahead and handle his reaction here. I just had to message that guy that tried to call me on Skype and tell him I was. Um, yeah, it's my reaction phase now, and uh, normally in a reaction phase, um, I can move my reserves and I can and I could move my air units. But the weather conditions at the start of this scenario are no air turn. The weather is bad, so there's I can't use can I can move my reserves. My cutting in and out is what Kevin says. Anybody having it trouble like hearing you're me? Dropping the end of your sentences. Yeah, if you're using push to talk, you let go. No, I'm, I'm at not. some point. Okay, and then if that's the case, you may want to move the microphone just a hair closer to your mouth then, because um, it drops okay. when you pause for two seconds. Guy, okay, can there you hear you me now? Cool. Okay. So Okay, it's my reaction phase, and I'm gonna what I got available to move. In my reaction phase, I can remove my reserves half their movement points. Um, road. He has one and a half movement points that he can use, but the road hexes are a half a movement point, so he's gonna move. Hmm. Debating. No, um, you you're still cutting out a bit there, Bill. Am I still cutting out? Uh, yeah. I don't know what else I can do about it. Um, I'm going to spend an SP. I'm going to draw back to Pyongyang from my uh, headquarters. That's in B1935. He's going to draw back here and take a SP, and I'm going to fuel that headquarters up. place a fueled marker there and that means he can fuel all the uh, independent units um, not the divisional ones all the independent units that um, need fuel he can fuel. okay I think that's it for my reserve movement let me check over on the other
Okay, Jim. Okay. So now Bill has finished his reaction phase, we go into the combat phase. And the combat phase is split into two parts. You have your actual combat, which comes second, and but initially... Jim, I'm not done yet. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Jump in the gun. I just want to attack stuff. So I'm, I may fire some barrages, too. Yeah, I'm going to fire some barrages, artillery bar barrages here. Barrage on A1905 cost me 3T. Throw from the headquarters here at 1935, but he's drawing back to grab those supplies from Pyongyang and then he's tossing them forward to the artillery. And close terrain. Not going to be any. There's going to be one modifier to the left. So I'm going to switch from the 12 to 16 column down to the 8 to 11 column, and that's on the barrage table under the 4.0. Uh. You're hitting 19.05. Yes, a 19.05. I'm hitting. Yeah, that's open. That is open, isn't it? So I'm getting confused by the There's colors. And we just played this. We just played this game like a month ago, didn't we, Jim? Yeah. Okay, I'm attacking on the 12 to 16. I'm rolling 2d6. Standing, Jim. <laughs> okay, my artillery missed. So we've both been doing pretty good as far as missing here, haven't we? Um, okay, that's all I'm going to do, Jim. Okay. Might have done a little more if we were actually... Go ahead. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know what you mean. Okay, so we're going to do the Chinese combat phase. Now, the combat phase is split into two parts. You have your artillery barrages and then your combat. So I'm going to go ahead and start by doing an artillery barrage from Hex 1604. Combine that with the other hex name. You guys should be seeing that I'm moving my artillery units up top here. I'm going to combine those two units and the, the number in the yellow is the barrage strength. So I'm going to have 22 total barrage strength. And 22 barrage strength, if you look at the barrage table, cost me 3T. So I'm going to have this guy here throw the supply to those guys. He has a 7 and I'm going to reduce that to six in a token. Why dump for your guys? Excuse me? Healthy supply dump. Yeah, I got Cheney start with a fairly decent supply. So right if we look at the barrage table, I'm on the 17 to 24 column. There's going to be two shifts here. If you click on the globe, you'll see that Bill's sitting in low hills, which is the green color. And the low hills is classified again as close terrain. So there's a shift on the artillery barrage for that. So it goes down to 12 to 16. Now Bill's unit there is a single regiment. So there's another shift for that. Since it's you know, a fairly lightly populated hex. So I go all the way down to the 8 to 11 column on the barrage table. So we can go ahead and take that roll. Ouch. Oh, there's a good roll. So that roll is a one half on the table. And what that means is there's... 50% chance that Bill is going to lose a step from that guy. So on a roll of 4 to 6 on a single die, he'll lose a step. So I'll let him go ahead and roll that. Roll a d6, Jim? Yeah, go ahead and roll a d6. Oh, I roll it. That's right. I'm dead. Yeah, so that wipes out that unit. So generally, you're, you're Place him over there. score those kind of hits for you, but this one It's actually out. fairly rare, isn't it, Jim? Yeah, especially from an 8... Eight barrage. So that unit's dead because it's a single step unit. And then I'm going to look to see if I have any other barrages around here. 